Welcome back folks. In this video, it's about different topics. I want to target different ideas and things I did in the recent week. So it's a kind of a mixed bag. It's probably also a tips and tricks video. Um, <clears throat> the first news is that we got now Bitwig Studio 4.49 and everything asks probably where is the new Bitwig version 4.5 or 5.0. No one knows. Uh, the Probably the announcement is around the corner. I guess um, NAM is around the corner. Also a super booth here in Berlin is coming up. So I guess we got some kind of announcement in the next weeks or so. Um, yeah, that's something I expect to drop soon-ish. Um, but also this release here, 4.49, is has a lot of bug fixes here in there. Also something we discovered on my channel here. Uh, the grid module did not work in stereo if interpolation mode was set to nearest. That's something I um, filed back then. Uh, because I made some kind of looper, I think I can link to the video. I made some kind of looper in the grid and some people commented uh, under, my, under this video and said uh, actually the grid module output mono for some reason and I didn't believe it. And I tested it and sure, it, it was outputting mono. To that time but now we got this fixed here in this uh, uh, current update there are also a lot of other different fixes in here um, small little things um, there was something in here I already discovered yeah crashes it's always nice to see that they fix some crashes here um, yeah, this this is also a problem for me. Scrolling the arranger to time zero would sometimes become impossible in a project. By this is something I discovered also a lot um, that I couldn't scroll back to the beginning. So a lot of stuff is actually fixed in this one. So make sure you download the current version. Yeah, to have a easier life. Um, the second thing I discovered today is WAF tool. It's a DAW in the browser, and I know it looks horrible, right? But it has some neat features I think that could be nice for Bitwig 2. So first up, you have a chatbot here down below. And you, if you are not annoyed by the amount of AI uh, news dropping the, the recent weeks, um, this is nonetheless pretty interesting that you have here a chatbot in the DAR. Um, it's maybe also more interesting for beginners. They can type in, for instance, here, um, create a new MIDI clip on, yeah, maybe on the first track with a nice melody in, of course, D sharp minor. And then you can give the spot basically some advices and he tries to uh, make sense of it and then com comes up with something here and what you get here is a button uh, pretty soon and then you click on the button and then it creates exactly this for you and this could be interesting inside Bitwig not only to make certain tasks so you click it here right so you know now have a track on the first synth um, instrument here. We also created a MIDI clip and also there's a random melody in it and we can can hit play. It's nothing special but it you know it gives you it gets you into the door it uh, gets you some the first advice is how you do something and I could also imagine to output here uh, what you have to do manually to create a clip and to create notes in there and then how you can play it back right so it could be a nice little tutorial thing inside the door for bitwig something like this here and it's probably also not very hard to implement because we have also the controller api so i could imagine someone could hack this already in with gpt4 api and also the controller api and it could be probably possible already to do that and it could be also nice to have the complete manual or documentation of Bitwig in a chatbot. So you can just ask certain things in there and then you get back um, some answers and maybe also some recommendation for YouTube videos. Maybe all the YouTube videos are um, kind of obsolete. 
which I would be happy about so I don't have to make these videos and can just, you know, uh, make some random videos about not really tutorials, more kind of um, how, how to get inspiration, how to uh, create things, how to think about making music and stuff like this, not like, you know, these hardcore tutorials. This is how you do a bass line. This is how you do uh, pad sounds and so on. So this could be something for the chatbot to cover and also to uh, create easy things to do. A second thing in the store is when you click here on instrument track, you get some kind of the ch something like the chain in Bitwig Studio, right? So maybe you can, can I hide this here? Um, I have to click here, okay. So this is kind of a um, similarity to the to Bitwig Studio where we have the chain here, but you can see here the synth is already in some kind of grid format. And this is something I envisioned for Bitwig Studio for a long time now, that we have instead of this grid or of this uh, chain here where we can create some kind of instruments and then effects after that. So instead of having this, we go straight to the grid in here. We don't have to create a grid instrument where we have to click into it so this one is basically straight in here already, right? So this would be something I could envision for Bitwig Studio to have this. And also, of course, some kind of um, uh, GUI interface designer where we can design our interfaces for these instruments, for these grids. Because in my opinion, um, interfaces are really the key to VSTs, why they are great, because you can really tailor um, GUI to a certain workflow which you can't in the grid it's still like you know very nerdy to go into the grid and then tweak everything in there also if I want to make a preset or want to make an instrument and give it someone else who is not really firm in the grid it would be nice to for me to actually to um, give the person a nice little simpler interface to access my very complex grid so interface designer would be nice in the next version for bitwig studio uh, it's probably not in there it, I, it's just my my dream right so my my dreams for for future bitwig version so nerds could go into bitwig studio and could do all the complex things and can create presets for people that are not that involved into the grid but they can still benefit from all this because they get a nice grid patch with a nice interface with a simple interface they can use in their daily in the daily work and the nerds can go in to the grid and create all this complex stuff so it's a benefit for both worlds right for the uh, for the beginners and also for people that just want to do music and also for nerds that want to go in and want to create instruments and new kind of devices so this would be nice to have so these are the ideas around here, Wave Tool or WAF Tool. Um, I put you a link in the description, you can try it out. It doesn't cost any money and it's free to use. But the interface is not really good here, but it sparks some ideas. I could imagine to have this um, at some things inside of Bitwig Studio, like here, yeah, you know, this grid view um, as a chain replacement. Um, I think also in Bitwig we have also also already here this um, I don't know what the the key command is I think it's Control and um, Enter we get this here right you can already search for stuff um, and execute certain commands um, with this so this would be nice to have your basically a chat bot in there and um, <clears throat> maybe do some work with this create a clip create a clip with some random melody in there, create a chain, create a synthesizer, a simple synthesizer with the grid and so on. Um, could be nice to have. Uh, I know a lot of people are very suspicious of the new AI um, things and um, I see already people r rolling with their eyes, but it's, uh, yeah, it could be something. I mean, um, certain tasks are tedious so you want to you know get them done with the bot maybe okay so this is uh, something i had in mind 
Another thing I want to show you is um, some tips and tricks here. For instance, um, let's say we have a phase four and you want to make a patch with this. So the first problem is, is there a reverb on there? No. Sounds like there's a reverb somewhere. Um, yeah, uh, when you make a patch, basically the problem is that every key you're pressing on the keyboard, so every sound sounds the same with every key. And when you install, for instance, a piano contact library um, that is very nicely sampled, you have for each key a different sample and also for each different key for different velocity um, settings you have a different sound. So in Bitwig Studio, we have the key track, for instance. So we can use the key track here and modulate something. So when you change the key, for instance, if you use C3, nothing happens because we are exactly in the middle. So we have no modulation value. But then if you go up, we get more and more modulation value. You can see this here, right? But sometimes when you when the keys are close together, so let's say we have your C4 and then D4, the change in modulation value is not that much, right? So um, you can use your key track and, you know, tweak it around and maybe switch it to absolute mode and do stuff like this here. This is also possible. Um, actually, it's not a, not a bad idea. But still, if you have here, you know, you have your two keys that are close together. Also, the modulation value is close together. So what I do most of the times is I go to the grid. And usually these days I go a lot, a lot of times to the grid. It's almost like I never use these modulators here in front of the device. It's kind of obsolete for me in a way. So I hope, I mean, it's still, it's still a nice feature of Bitwig Studio, but we don't get any more modulator or we haven't got any new modulators in, in years now or in months. Maybe the game, there's one or two we got. Uh, but usually I go to the node FX thing here, use a node grid. Um, and then in the node grid, we get the pitch, pitch here from the keyboard. And we also can use here an oscilloscope. So we see here C, C4, D4. Modulation value is small. So to increase the modulation value here, we can use an, a gain knob to increase, basically to blow this up. And then we use a chappy chaff. It's some kind of value here. And now maybe this one here from C4 to D4, we have a big modulation jump or value jump jump so the problem now is this is bipolar and we want to have it unipolar so we can use our by to uni so we only stay in the positive range right so we never go down here to the neg negative uh, section so we stay positive and we have a modulation value here that jumps around like crazy but it's also predictable so d4 it's always at the same position no matter what you do, if we go back to D, it's exactly the same position. So it's predictable. So we can take this value and just output this one here, maybe as, um, what's that, timbre? Yeah, we can use timbre then here on the front end and just modulate the shape. Right, and then we put this here into polyphonic mode, maybe 12 voices. This one is, has also 12 voices, okay. So now we can press a chord that is close together uh, from from the from the keys. So the keys are close together, but the modul modulation value jumps around like crazy. So you have three different distinct sounds that you are playing together. So it's sometimes it's nice to have that something like this in the patch. Um, to make this patch sound great. This is not a, the great sounding patch, but it's just an example. Uh, maybe can, I can do here um, some kind of bell sound. Um, 
Maybe go to 10. Something like this, then modulate this with the envelope. Okay, so we use the tumble to change this. Maybe you can use the pressure here to change the... Let's put this here in stereo mode, yeah, stereo. Use the pressure to modulate here yeah, this by a small amount of, uh, to change the, the hertz here or the offset. And then um, duplicate this and go out here to um, pressure. Maybe different setting. When you play two sounds together or three sounds in a chord, you know, every every key sounds distinct and different. So this is the, the main reason why I use this. And you can see here I'm using this kind of like a modulator inside of the note um, box here um, instead of fumbling around here with modulators. So most most of the times I'm using a grid for for anything special instead of using modulators, which are fine in most cases when you just you, you need an LFO or maybe a random mode or step modulator. I use that, but then when I go want to go into more depth and want to chain certain things, right? I go usually into the grid and then modulate from within the grid, the device here I am using the expressions most of the times, um, yeah, to modulate something. So the next thing is to uh, use the phase four as a pads synthesizer. Um, I usually use phase four for bass sounds and these kind of bell sounds because it's an FM synthesizer. So it's perfectly made for these digital and harsh sounds. Um, but recently I discovered this here. Yeah, maybe remove here all the modulations. I discovered this as a pad synthesizer. So what I did is instead of modulating here each operator with the other operator, I'm using it as an additive synthesizer. So I'm blending in here the loudness of each of these operators, right? And then use it basically in parallel. And then I use maybe a super massive reverb here, put on a long ass delay, spaces the place. Let's see. Slow fade in. Remove the modulation here. Okay, so um, we have basically a one partial, one oscillator. Um, and then we blend in your second one. But we use your different format. Oh, this one. And then you can use your um, pressure again to bring in these overtones, different settings. So every time I press a different key, I get a different mixture of these partials. Let's add here a random mod. 
slow, really slow. Maybe three bars. Not synced, it's running free. And then modulators here. So it's a perfect um, small little additive synthesizer that creates nice lush pads for you. And when you use it here on sign, it's basically an additive synthesizer. We can use or try to use a step mod here. Is it the first, only the first uh, thing, and then you bring in. It's pretty short. Okay. This one down. Okay. And you need to hit play, probably. So you can use the step mode to bring in some rhythms. So maybe record this. So, and while we're having this running here, I can also show you here the plugin I recently bought, which is Gain Aim. And this is basically what I did with my auto level or auto leveler preset I showed you in one of my videos. I also increased this. We have a noise floor here, where we can say everything below is not actually used to analyze the loudness. So we can blend out everything that's below that and everything that's above the noise floor gets analyzed and then it's used to target the loudness here of minus 18 luffs. You can also switch this here to squash which is, which is more like a um, compressor and leveler is basically a super 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 slow compressor if you want to you call it that way but it's really just a leveler. You can see on the on the right side how it changes the volume. So here the gain is reduced by minus 2.2, right? And it's pretty slow. And when you see it's steadying on one place, you can even put this unlocked and then it stays at this place. So it's kind of an, a nice mixture between a normalizer plug-in, a compressor and a leveler. So you have everything in there. A link is also in the description below. I think this is 40 bucks here. Uh, but you can also use just my uh, my auto leveler plug in here, uh, which looks like this. And here, and here, you have also a threshold like this one, but there's no real target loudness. The target loudness is basically zero dB peak, so there's no RMS or loudness value. So that's the difference but it kind of does the same so here we now have now a static a steady nice little loudness um, change up over time okay so now that we have this and I showed you also gain aim um, you can also go here to microtonic which I just installed two days ago There's of course here a nice little uh, beat space uh, plug-in where you can change the drums. 
So as far as I know, these are all kinds of presets or patches made by the community over years. And I also coded yesterday some kind of script here, which is called Polarity Pitch, which kind of takes all these frequencies here, right? And pitches them to the next nearest D sharp note. So all the bass sounds or the long, longer kind of notes are on D sharp now, which makes it, yeah, easy for me to integrate it here with this pad sound because it's also on D sharp minor. So I can explore with this here, uh, with the beat space. Right, you can hear there's some kind of bass in there, some 808 tuned to the third pitch. And I can use the polarity pitch. Uh, where is it here? And now it's pitched to D sharp. So it's perfect. I kind of like this. Um, let's use a glitch on here. Give it a blue glitch. Okay, maybe use my crossover. So, perfect. Um, there's also a replacement probably coming up for the crossover here where I use um, multiple bands to level out these bands to with the dB meter um, to get a nice uh, mix down. And the creator of crossover uh, made another plugin called um, Spectral Compressor. Um, and he also made a new version recently which features uh, this kind of... Um, yeah, analyzer here, where you can see what you're doing. Before we had only this here and people, you know, had no idea what you are really doing here. And here you can see what's happening. So um, what we can do with this basically is we can dial in here a threshold line, as you can see, um, global threshold, yeah, it goes up and down and then nothing happens. <clears throat> and then you say you want to, um, let's unmute this here. And then you want to say you want to compress downwards, so you increase here the um, ratio. And you can see certain bins here, spectrally, are getting compressed. So it's a multiband compressor with unlimited bands. And then you can change the threshold curve here to uh, maybe, I think, not really sure. I think this is pink noise 3 dB, if I'm not wrong, 3 dB per octave here, right? So you can make this completely even if you want to, and then completely squash everything down. Something like this. So it gives you also a nice balance, also spectrally, so there's no, no bandpass filters involved. It's completely reducing the bins. So it should be clean. There's also some other stuff here. You can use a side chain and then you can use it like a track spacer where you use a different track kick drum as an input and then you duck the bass here with a spectral compressor, which could be also nice or interesting. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on the spectral compressor alone because there's so much to cover actually. And um, I still need some time with it to find some nice workflows or how I want to use it in my mix down. But I want to give you a heads up that it's actually out there. It's for free. I put the link in the description where you can download this. And it's probably useful for some of you. Okay, what else? Oh yeah, sure. Um, that's the spectral compressor. Glitch, the microtonic, that's everything I showed you. The phase four is a pet uh, device, which is uh, which leads me to the organ device, which I also used or rediscovered recently as a nice pet device. I mean, 
You can use the supermassive and put it on kind of everything and it sounds like great or becomes a pet at some point, right? So it's it's super, I see supermassive not as a reverb, it's more like an, I don't know, a processor, a sound processor or more like a synthesizer in a way. So you to see large um, splashy synths maybe. I don't know, let's actually synchronize, let's use... Um, 80 space verb actually lies like this here final frontier maybe so now we have one bin here uh, so this is also kind of an additive synthesizer but instead of having here the uh, the harmonics the um, The harmonic series we have here basically selected things you can see it down below in the info box uh, this is the primary, this is the root note or the fundamental. Then we have here a fifth below, and then this is um, one octave below, so it's just the bass, it's the same note, just one octave lower. Right. And then we have here the fourth, um, the twelfth, and uh, fifteenth, seventeen, nineteen, and so on. So um, this pro these three basically sound always kind of harmonic so we can use this and start to modulate this with maybe random things or maybe use a step mod here and bring this down to quarter note and then we use the smoothing right so it becomes like a nice little um, curve so you can bring this in here over time you can see it's probably still too fast maybe use a bar here so we have a slow modulation you can also uh, randomize this um, duplicate and use this here for that maybe not too much Randomize, use different step size here. Uh, let's use that. Let's use a random mod, also slow, then bring in here some upper partials. And you can switch here from pure, which are sine waves to triangle and this is rectified sign and sometimes you can also go here for a chorus before you go to the you go to the reverb can decide how many overtones you want to generate here but it gives you a nice a nice pet sound in my opinion and it's not only for simulating organs So with just a bunch of small little modulators here and a nice reverb, you can also replace this here if you don't want to use the Valhalla Supermassive, which is for free. 
can also use the delay plus here. And dial in maybe here space reverb, longer delay, the difference between left and right channel. And we have already chorus in there. You can maybe use a different chorus at the end, different speed setting, different feedback setting, maybe a different algorithm. Which is also nice. So you don't always need a new synthesizer or you know a new fancy synth. Just some simple stuff here with simple sine waves and a bit of reverb. Um, you get a lot of things done in terms of pet sounds. And if you don't like to actually create to create this stuff every time, you can just sample it and put it in a sampler and um, use multiple, you know, sampler presets. Um, to get you started for the next project. So, or you just save it as a preset or whatever. So multiple things you can do with this. Okay. So this is something I did in the, in the recent uh, days, in the recent week, uh, experimented with a lot of things. Also a lot of modal synthesis. I tried to come up with something, but I want to make a different video about this this week. So stay tuned. So I think that's it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you found it helpful and uh, subscribe to the channel, of course, and I see you on the next one. Bye.